Some SDA pastors have commented on the U.S. election results. And, you know, I showed you one last three days. I'm going to be honest with you. My, um, I have been in an emotional and spiritual funk and depression since Tuesday night. And uh, you noticed that in that video, the pastor was so worried about the fact that Donald Trump won the U.S. election and that he was he did not like some of the policies of Donald Trump. So he was kind of lamenting, like he was so, so, so worried about that. So if you did not watch that video, I have linked it right in the description of this video for you to watch it, all right? Now, Another SDA pastor also commented on the U.S. election result, but that pastor was different. Friends, he was different, and uh, I liked how he actually shared his thoughts about the result of the election, connecting it with Bible prophecy, you know? So, I don't want to waste time. Let's get right into the video and listen to this SDA pastor's comments about the U.S. election results, all right? After that, I'll come back and uh, add my thoughts to it, all right? Let's get into it. Well, I, I want to get right into our, our time together tonight, and, and the question I want to begin with tonight it's literally not even been 24 hours yet, but as we look at the election on last night, and as many of us have wakened up this, past, this, this morning and have seen the news and all of that, I want to ask you this question tonight, and that is, will prophecy be fulfilled? Will prophecy be fulfilled? Uh, let me see you tonight. If you believe that, I want you to raise your hand tonight. If you believe that prophecy will be fulfilled. Well, I, I want to begin tonight, if I can have your attention, I want to begin tonight by telling you this, that, that the Word of God is sure. That whatever God declares, it will come to pass. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, whatever God says, it will come to pass. The Bible says that, that God is a man, that he cannot lie. But when the word of God begins to speak, it is so. How many of y'all believe God's word tonight? I believe that tonight. And I totally believe with my entire heart, mind, soul, and strength that prophecy is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. And I want to tell you tonight, it may hurt your feelings tonight, but I'm going to tell you like this on tonight from the truth of God's word that whether Vice President Kamala Harris became president or as now Donald Trump is now the president-elect again, I want to tell you tonight that prophecy still would be fulfilled. I want to tell you tonight that we don't put our 100% trust in a man. But we trust the Son of Man. Who says amen tonight? We put our trust in Jesus Christ because he alone is the only one that cannot fail. I want to tell you tonight, I want to keep that on the screen tonight because the reality is, is that sometimes, and I know that we had our candidate, and I know that whether it was on the Republican or Democrat or independent side, it doesn't matter what side we sit on, the reality is, is that God's word must be fulfilled. So whether or not he used Kamala to do it or whether or not he uses Trump to do it, it is going to come to pass. But I do want to say this tonight, and, and it is this tonight, that what we are seeing even right now in our nation's history, I want to tell you from all the sermons that we've preached over the month of October and, and the things maybe you've been hearing for years, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that those things are just before us right now. I want, to be, I want to be careful on how I outline what I want to say tonight because I, want, I really don't want you to get caught up in the politic as much more as the Word of God. But I do want to help you understand tonight that uh, because of the president-elect and those individuals who are behind him and are pushing a major agenda, we can be sure that the Bible is going to fulfill itself, and I believe in short order. 
I want to put it like this, that everything that we've been hearing from Trump, it fits the narrative of Revelation chapter 13. And if there's any profile that we have understood, the profile of prophecy and the profile of the agenda of the Republican Party, as hypocritical as we may say it may be, it still lines up with what the Word of God declares. Come on, say amen, somebody. Now, let me be clear tonight because I don't want somebody to tune out right now and think that I'm calling Republicans hypocrites. Because Democrats are hypocrites as well. I can't get an amen in this house tonight. And church folk are also hypocritical as well. Y'all just said amen right there as well. All of us got some hypocrisy on the inside of us. And God is going to use what's happening in our world to simply wake up a nation and wake up a people. And I want to tell you tonight that the things that are before us, you ought not be playing games with God right now. I, I want to preach a little bit and teach a little bit tonight, everybody. And that is, if there was ever a time where your prophetic eyes and your spiritual life ought to heighten, that time is right now. You, you need to ask yourself a question. I'm going to go to the Word tonight, but you need to ask yourself a question for real, for real, for real. You need to have a talk with God and say, God, am I ready? I can't answer that question for you. It is a question that God is asking all of us even on tonight. And he's going to ask us even in the days ahead, are you really ready? Are you ready to stand for God no matter what? Who says amen tonight? When I'm looking at this world right now and looking at the agenda because when a person speaks and says what's going to happen, you ought to believe what they say. And I, I, I see the individuals that push. And let me just break this down for y'all real quick. Because I, I don't want to rush just a little bit. Can I take my time, Dr. Lamb? Can I take my time tonight? I, I won't keep it all night. I promise I won't. But, but understand this, that Christian nationalism. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I say Christian nationalism is a major threat to the democracy and the political religious liberty that all of us stand upon. The Bible teaches, help me Holy Ghost tonight, that there ought to be a separation between church and between state. But Christian nationalists, understand me tonight, somebody, will come in and will say that, well, America is not only a Christian nation, but it's a Christian nation for Christians, by Christians, and only for Christians. So then if you are not a Christian, then we have every right to be persecuted. And if you will not align yourself with the agenda that's already been manifested, then we will do whatever it takes to stamp you out like we did during the dark ages. And they will do it under the guise of we are doing the will of God. Ah, hear me somebody tonight. Can, can y'all go with me a little bit tonight, somebody? But we realize that the devil is behind this whole plight because he knows that he has but a short time. So he's going to do everything he can to try to be able to deceive mankind. But the Bible declares that there is a people called the remnant. God, I wish y'all would help me preach this thing tonight. Who are going to stand for God no matter what. They're going to be like a tree planted by the streams of water who shall not and cannot be moved. And we've got to get there, ladies and gentlemen. I want to go to, I want to, go to a quote, two quotes tonight, but before I go into my main text tonight, and it is this. Are y'all following tonight? You there? Amen? Let, let's jump in this right now. Last day events. Also, page 11. Also, Testimonies to the Church, volume number 9, page 11 and 12. We are living in the what, everybody? In the time of the... In. Get a screenshot as well. Amen. I don't have a handout for you tonight. We are living in the time of the end. The fast approaching signs of the time declare that what? Come on now, read it like you believe it. The coming of the Lord is at hand. The day in which we live are what? Are solemn and important. Don't miss this right now. Preach this this past weekend. Here it is. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the face of the earth. 
plagues and judgment are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. Here it is. Don't miss this. The calamities by land and by what else? And see, here is where we're living right now. The unsettled state of society. I want to pause because I want to make sure you understand right now. We are living in an unsettled state of society. This, because of this, the alarms of war are pretentious. They are forecasting events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis, and don't miss this, great changes. I started to call my little talk tonight, my sermon night, great changes. Great changes are soon to take place in our world. And the final movements will be what, everybody? The final movements will be what, everybody? Will be rapid ones. Now, hear me tonight because I'm going to talk to somebody tonight that says, well, I'm going to get ready when I see things cracking down. I, I'm going to get ready when I start seeing more things take place. Can I ask y'all tonight, how much more do we need to see? How much more clear can God be even right now? The last movements are going to be rapid ones, and it's not time to get ready. It's the time to be ready. Who says amen tonight? I want to tell you tonight, of a shadow of a doubt, that a storm is coming. Praise be to God. Friends, I like the comment of this pastor. Whether Trump or Harris, prophecy, I mean Bible prophecy, will still be fulfilled. Unlike some SDA pastors, you know, this pastor seems like he does not really care or he does not care much about who leads the United States as a president. Instead, he cares about what God says. Also, I noticed in his statement that he did not place or put his trust in the policies of Donald Trump or in the policies of Kamala Harris. Instead, he placed his trust in the policies of God. He placed his trust in what God has for his life and also for the lives of his members. That is what I saw in his statement. You know, so when Trump won, it did not worry him much. He was not so worried. You know, God has better policies for us all, no matter who you are, even if you are black or you are white, if you are undocumented immigrants or you are documented immigrants, God has a better policy for your life than what Kamala Harris promised or than what Trump promised. So I want to say that there are different opinions or thoughts about the results of the U.S. elections, but as Christians and let me say as Seventh Day Adventists, we should not let the result of the election like make us so worried about life because it is not policies of humans that um, take care of us but it is God that provides for us. Friends, this is all that I had to share with you today. Um, so please um, like and share your thoughts in the comments if this video was helpful, right? Thanks for watching. My name is Lawrence. See you next time. God bless you.